Hello, it's Scott Manley here. A few days ago, the new science module, Nauka, took the International Space Station for a spin, and many of you wanted to know just how much of a spin was involved. The official term had been 45 degrees, but we actually had some uh, telemetry from the station. So many of you went and set out to try to render this, and the funny thing is, everybody ran into some interesting problems. This is a nice graph by Liam Kennedy, which basically takes the roll, pitch and yaw of the International Space Station, which were uh, taken from this International Space Station live page, and, and graphs them all out. And many people decided to take this graph and turn it into actual animation. And this is one by Irma Gerd, or Maxed Out on NASA Space Flight. It was marvellous to see this, but... This is not actually what happened. It certainly does look like the space station's doing something wild. Obviously, it's accelerated in time, but it has many movements that aren't actually consistent with the real thing. And to understand why, uh, first of all, I want to show you my version of what I think happened. So yeah, this is my first attempt to do anything in Blender. I just grabbed a model from the NASA site. I took... Uh, as Vesda and put it on underneath to show us where Naoka would be. I haven't added in any progress or Soyuz or Dragon, but you get the idea of the shape of the station. Now, it is traveling towards the right here, and this is unusual in this orientation because the Russian section is going first. Normally, the international section uh, goes first, and that means that in its orientation before the event started, it was yawed 180 degrees around. Now what happens is Nauka starts to fire its thrusters to pull away from the station and that pulls the right side down so it begins to pivot around like this. And the engines on the Progress and Zvezda basically start to counteract this and slow the rotation down and they keep a sort of constant rotation rate of about half a degree per second. Eventually they stop it and they bring it all the way back around to its original orientation. So this took like an hour or so, it completed about one and a half rotations, and this has been confirmed by mission controller Zebulon Scoville, who uh, was there and <laughs> active during this incident. So why are people getting such wacky rotations in their animations? Well, let's take a look at the graph. And the important line to look at is the green one, the pitch. And that basically starts at roughly zero and then increases until it hits 90 and then starts decreasing until it hits, well, minus 90. Guess what? This isn't going up and down, right? This is rotating around because the pitch is being capped between 90, plus 90 and minus 90. Now, if you look at the red and the blue line for the roll on the pitch, when the green line hits one of these 90 degree limits, they flip around, they take these big transitions, and that's because the space station orientation is moving what, through what we call a singularity, right? At plus 90 and minus 90, both the roll and the yaw become the same thing. So when it comes out of that, they can swap places, they can transition. The, the best way to think about it is if you imagine watching a plane coming towards you and as it comes towards you, you lift your head higher and higher. And then as it passes over the top, you need to turn around very quickly or you end up falling over on your back. Now, the other term for this situation is gimbal lock. That's basically where you have three axes of rotation and when you move to certain positions, you can end up with two of your axes aligned and you lose one of your axes. And of course, this was a big thing in flying the Apollo spacecraft because they had three axis navigation. And if the spacecraft ever pointed into one of these regions, the gimbals would have to move infinitely fast to correctly track and they could lose orientation. So they had a warning light to tell them when they were getting close to these so that they didn't get into that situation. So anyway, the yaw, pitch, and roll that are shown are really for humans. They're something that we understand, but they also represent mathematically 
Euler angles. And yeah, Euler angles have their problems with their singularities. Internally, they're represented by something called quaternions. And if you've ever made 3D video games, you've probably encountered these because they're really useful ways of representing orientation. They have all these nice properties, how you can operate on them, and they don't have all these singularities. And if you look at the video I showed with the actual telemetry on screen, you can see the quaternions listed in there. They show up as LV, LH, QTRN, and you've got zero through three because it's a four dimensional number. It's just like adding a fourth gimbal ring to avoid gimbal lock. You add an extra dimension and magically you now have this uh, very useful set of properties. And you know, there's an interesting bit of history. The quaternions were invented by a guy called Hamilton, who was a physicist and a mathematician. If you've ever encountered Hamiltonian in, you know, in classical mechanics, that's him. And at the time, it was known that complex numbers could be used to represent rotations in a plane. Uh, and you know how you have the real part and the complex part with the value i, the square root of negative one. So Hamilton wanted to generalize this to three-dimensional rotations. And so he tried to do a version with a real part and an, an imaginary part and a secondary imaginary part. And he could never make the math work. It could never be self-consistent. And he had this sort of moment of revelation that he needed three imaginary parts and one real part. And the legend is he had this flash of inspiration while crossing the Broom Bridge in Dublin. So that bridge actually has the equations carved into it to commemorate it. It was that important. And of course, at the time, they were just a mathematical construct which had nice properties. These days, it's essential to all sorts of applications. There are physics problems that require them to be solved. They're obviously used to make video games, 3D graphics. They're used for uh, representing like rotations in robots and spacecraft. So yeah, interesting sideline in history there. And so I just want to end with a little bit of footage again compiled by Liam Kennedy. This is a nadir looking camera as we pan upwards. And the great thing here is you see the city lights as they pass over Asia. It's not every day you get those kind of dynamic views from the space station. And that's a good thing. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.